You sounded great. Yeah, right. What? You're telling me you weren't feeling it? You were in it. We don't need to, we don't need to put them all out. I know, but we have to keep filming. Your hearing is deteriorating rapidly. We'll come back. Till then, Lou, we just keep going, okay? No. Lou, no. let's play tomorrow, let's see what it's like, okay? I'm gonna be like a click track, you can play to me. You have to understand, your first responsibility is to preserve the hearing you have. I can't hear you, do you understand me? I can't, I'm deaf! I'm deaf! I'm deaf. Um, it's an honor to be speaking with you today, and um, thank you very much for taking your time to do this. First off, how are you doing today? Everything's great. How are you? I'm excellent. Thanks, Swaxon. Um, my first Good. question is, in one word, how would you describe your experience acting in Sound of Metal? One word? Uh, I have to say it's a blessing, a real blessing to be involved in something that's so wonderfully written, so sensitively put together, painstakingly. It took him, took this man 13 years to put the whole thing together. So I really appreciate his uh, efforts. And so for me, it's been a blessing. Could you talk about how this script came to you and what made you decide to act in this film? My agent uh, showed me the script. I, I got the whole script, I read it. I was amazed. Uh, right away at the, uh, the way the story was written, how sensitive it was. Uh, in particular, um, for the character of Joe, which I play, uh, how close it was to my own life. Um, the same kind of paths that Joe traveled uh, uh, in addiction programs. The thing that really struck me about the role of Joe was the way his spiritual uh, beliefs were lined up because I growing up in Chicago I was I was uh, a Roman Catholic went to the church I was an altar boy and I was always taught to pray to uh, a God that is up there in heaven or out there someplace that's separate from myself but as I started to study spirituality here in Los Angeles with a few teachers I had I adopted the philosophy of what Joe says in the movie, that the kingdom of God is right here. So anything you want to manifest comes from the within to the without, not, not from out there down to earth. So it's a, a switch in philosophy that I made in my life. And then when I read this in the script, that Joe feels the same way when he tells Reuben at the end that uh, the kingdom of God is right there. Uh, it, it just lined up with what I personally have come to believe for myself. So um, could you like talk about your experience with the director? Darius Martyr. Yeah, he's, he's a he's very sensitive man. He's very funny. But the, uh, the thing that I really admired about him was... Um, with the script, if I did not feel comfortable saying some lines or I needed a different way to start the scene off, he was totally open with uh, improving or trying something different. You know, when you do a Shakespeare play, that's it. That's Shakespeare play, that's the way it goes. Every word is Shakespeare, okay? And you don't change anything. But Darius said, look, I'm not Shakespeare, I'm Darius. So if you're not comfortable, so a few times, there are a few scenes in the movie that I, I asked Darius if we could just uh, improv to open up the scene and then do the things that were written. And we do that several times in the movie. So uh, I was really gratified that he was, he was willing to uh, co-create a lot of times or collab co collaborate with me and with Riz Ahmed about how things would go. So he was very open-minded, very flexible, and yet, uh, just a really sensitive writer, really great. 
going back to your character, Joe, did you do any kind of research when you decided to play with him? Well, to tell you the truth, my whole life has kind of been like the research. Uh, for example, um, you know, we have this sober house that all the deaf addicts live in, in Sound of Metal. And right here in Los Angeles, there's a place called Awakenings. And that is a deaf sober house. It's run by deaf people, deaf counselors, they have deaf addicts. So I've been very familiar with that program. I've also, as an interpreter, a sign language interpreter, I've gone through addiction programs with deaf clients. Uh, they, go, they have to go through a whole hearing. All these people are hearing, you're the only deaf person in the program. So I've, I follow them or shadow them through as a sign language interpreter. So I've been in a lot of those situations. I ran a, uh, a ministry at a church here in LA for 15 years for addiction. So, and plus myself, I've had my own addiction problems when I got back from the war. So there's a lot of that in there. I, I didn't have to go too far to research uh, Joe because um, many people that I know would ask me, uh, did you write this movie? I said, no, I, because it seems very close to me. I said, no, I wish I had, but no, I did not write the movie, even though Joe is very close to my own, uh, my own life experience. What was that all about, Ruben? Oh, your roof? I was fixing your roof. It's like one of the eaves is, I was trying to fix your roof. You don't need to fix anything here. I've got a little uh, assignment for you, okay? You get up early, right? Yeah, pretty early, yeah. I'll have hot coffee waiting for you at 5.30. Early enough for you? I don't know, I guess. Okay, five. <laughs> and I'll uh, provide a room for you. Or four. And there's nothing that needs to be accomplished in this room. All I want you to do is just sit. All I ask is if and when you cannot just sit, you turn yourself to the pen and paper that I'm going to supply for you. And I want you to write. Doesn't matter what you write, how you write, whether it's spelled correctly, or if it's just a big mess. I don't care. No one will read it, okay? But I want you to keep writing continuously without stopping until you feel like you can sit again. So the next question is about your character once again, and I guess you could kind of relate this to yourself, but um, the question is, what do you love about playing this character? Oh, well, uh, I love how grounded he is. I love um, how calm he is and how peaceful he is. He, Joe tries to get in touch with the stillness as he talks about meditating and trying to get that, which in my own life, I've had struggles trying to meditate also. Um, a lot of times it's like a ping pong game. You know, you're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you can just focus on something that's uh, calm and in front of you that you can uh, latch into to bring yourself peace. So the thing I really loved about Joe is his uh, constant uh, going back to the stillness and being uh, centered. And that seems to be uh, when I... It even lingers afterward uh, because now in my own life, I think about Joe a lot and it, it reminds me of uh, what a strong character he is. A mentor, you know, every, I think everybody, everybody has somebody like Joe that they have in their life, or some teacher, somebody, or they wish they had. And I think that's why he, people have a warm feeling about him because uh, it reminds you of of somebody that you've had in your life that tried to put you on the right path, you know. 
I know I had that for the couple of teachers uh, in acting school, you know. I guess since his character was more easy for you to relate, were there still any challenges he kind of faced playing him still? But if so, how do you overcome it or overcame it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's always challenging uh, when you're on a movie set, you know. So uh, the challenge is just to be able to, to know your parts, to know all your, your lines, but then to forget the lines and be free to be free to do something new all the time. So anytime you're doing an acting assignment or a job, I think that the most important thing is to, um, you have to memorize the lines so you can forget them. And then you have to be, you have to just be, you have to exist within the parameters of the, those lines. You, there's no acting. When you, when you start acting, then it's over because everybody can see you acting and nobody wants to see anybody trying hard to act. So I think what we accomplished in this movie on, on the acting levels of everybody in the movie was, was that being able to be free and try something new, something first time so that it feels like, wow, this is real life. Um, not just somebody trying to act, uh, that's the whole trick of it too. Uh, a lot of people have seen the movie and they, they remark, they say, uh, well, it seems like it was like a documentary because it seems so real, you know, that, and that's good because if you can forget that these are actors and that this is really a story unfolding and you get involved and forget that, then that, you know, then you've accomplished uh, the mission, which is, like I said, no acting allowed, you know, just real being real and having relationships. I just want to mention that my favorite um, scene of the movies was between you and um, Reese, AKA Ruben, when he sat down at that round table as he was asking you for money for something. Obviously I'm not going to yes. spoil it here. Um, yes. I like that interaction between your character and Ruben. My question is basically, um, what was your favorite scene to shoot? Well, I liked all of them, but I did like, I liked that scene that everybody talks about that scene, everybody. And um, that's, uh, it's pretty rare to, uh, to have that kind of chemistry with another actor. Riz Ahmed is a, a very giving actor. He, he, he listens with his whole body. And when we were having that scene, we were pretty well connected there because we were, that was our last scene together. So we were, in essence, we were saying goodbye to each other. That was my last scene. I was all done after that. Then, then he had to go to uh, film the other part of the last movie, the, the last part of the movie. So it was very emotional. And uh, you can see, I think, uh, Mike, you know, when he asked me for the money, how emotional everything was, that was for real. He's, uh, he broke my heart. I can... He broke Joe's heart in that scene right there. So I'm just grateful that he was able to be so real with me, so connected. We were having a real relationship there. Um, that's a beautiful thing, especially if you have an opportunity to do that on film. And we only did no more than two or three takes for every scene because it's a very low budget movie. So it's not like you have all day and you're just okay, we'll do it again and again and again. No, no more than three takes, that's it. Uh, and so our, our connection was very deep, very personal. And uh, I'm, I'm forever grateful to Riz Ahmed because uh, a very generous actor. I really, really love him. Yeah, you could tell from that scene, it was really tense, like it felt so real. And I just want to add that what a, a tense way of saying goodbye by having that be the end of you guys um, acting yes. together. Very sad. Very sad. We both, you know, and even the director, Darius, he was standing in the corner while we did that, that scene. And uh, we did the scene. I look up and he's tears coming out of his eyes, the director. Oh, oh my God. It was just, it was uh, a very emotional scene for sure. What you see on there is, is happening for real. It's really amazing. 
to follow up with that, could you give me like a fun fact about any of your co-star, whether it's Riz or Olivia or Lauren or Matthew? Any yeah, of them? Riz. Riz is a Muslim and he has all these tattoos, but those are all fake tattoos in the movie. So that's fun. I mean, he had a big tattoo on his back, tattoo here, tattoo. Ta they're all fake tattoos because uh, they're, he's not, I, I guess I think he's not allowed to have them. So that's uh, kind of a fun thing. And uh, Olivia... Olivia is just, uh, I only acted in that one scene with her when she, when she came over to bring him to the place, but she was a lot of fun. All, all those people, this is such a serious movie, but yet we'd be walking along and I see Darius and Riz and they're wrestling. They're wrestling on the ground. I go, what the heck is going on? And they're fighting wrestling because they, because they love each other. It was like two brothers. So even though it was a uh, very heavy scenes, and a heavy subject matter, we had a lot of fun shooting it, a lot of fun. Kind of sounds like making a horror movie because people talk about how horror movies is like ah! so serious, but behind the scenes, they're having fun and joking around. <laughs> right, right. Same thing here. After we were like crying and everything, then we said, okay, now we're, then we're wrestling. So, yeah. you know, had a lot of fun. So I want to congratulate you on, on your Independent Film Spirit Award nomination oh, for Best you. Supporting Male Performance. Um, Thank you, where were you when you discovered that you got nominated? Oh, I was right. I was right here in my house. My, uh, my wife was on the computer. She goes, Paul, Paul. She calls me over and she showed me. So she was all excited. She sees everything first. I don't, I don't know anything. So I've, I've won so many nominations now that the, she's the, I always wait. I said, what do you got now? So she, she always has the news before me. So she's always, I, when I see, sometimes I hear her coming into the room. I go, okay, what happened? Cause she's telling me, Oh, you got this, you got that, you know. So it's good to have somebody who's excited. And if you win, um, who would you like to who's the first person you would like to thank? Oh, I would have to thank uh Darius for writing a beautiful script, for writing a role for me that changed my life. Thank him, thank Amazon, thank my wife for being so supportive. Growing up, which like actors or actresses did you admire? Oh, growing up, well, I'm I, I liked uh, John Wayne, I liked Humphrey Bogart, all the old time actors, uh, Clark Gable, all these because when I was a little boy, all these movies were on uh, the television, so I could tune into them. So those are the guys that I kind of looked up to, and then later on, uh, uh, you know, I always liked uh, westerns and. Um, Lawrence of Arabia was a big movie that I liked with uh, Peter O'Toole. So those are the kind of things, you know, the older guys that kind of uh, influenced me. Cary Grant, Edward G. Robinson, you know, James Cagney, those tough gangsters, you know, that kind of thing. I love that. Did you always wanted to act growing up or, and also what inspired you to pursue this dream? Well, I always wanted to be in a rock and roll band. So that's what I, I was doing. But um, I discovered acting later on. And I think uh, I just, uh, I've always kind of been a performer because I, when my, my parents were deaf and we, we would watch television, there was no closed captioning. So a lot of times I would interpret what was on the television for my dad. Like we'd watch a Western like Bonanza or uh, The Fugitive on TV. And there's no closed captioning. He couldn't understand it. So I would be sitting next to the television, signing for him everything that happened and actually being the characters. So that's my earliest remember of going, wow, this is kind of cool. Um, it's kind of cool to be an actor. So later on, I found it in, uh, at the university and uh, just decided that I would just dive into it right there. What do you hope viewers will take away from um, Sound of Metal? Well, I hope they can appreciate their hearing, uh, how precious it is, how sensitive it is, for one, and also appreciate another person's point of view, another person's um, experience in life, like deaf people, or people who spend their lives in uh, wheelchairs, or a person that, that's blind. To have an appreciation and empathy and an awareness, awareness that yours is not the only business or life going on here. There's all a bunch of other people here that 
need access to information, that want to be heard, that don't want to be discarded. There's, and nowadays, you know, things are becoming uh, clearer or lighter and peop more people are being uh, involved. Like, I hope that this movie creates more work for deaf people, deaf actors, and just an all around awareness that um, this world is so multifaceted, multi-layered with all kinds of different people and different abilities, different disabilities, and that it's still one, it's still one energy, it's still one globe, still one world, but it's multifaceted and multi-layered. And we should just become more aware of that. Sound of the Metal is a good example of being aware of, wow, you, you could lose your hearing if you don't protect it, you know. What advice do you have for aspiring um, authors? I mean, actors, sorry, not authors. Actors, yeah. just keep on working, keep on working. Uh, no matter what happens, if you get discouraged, you get a lot of rejection. Okay. Maybe if it's too much for you, then you shouldn't be an actor, you know, but you're going to get rejected many, 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 many times. You can't give up. You got to keep on moving forward. I encourage young, young kids to take lessons from, from acting teachers that have a good reputation and do some stage work, do some stage work, get, do a play somewhere. Get ready, because someday you're going to move that, shift that on over into film or television. But you have to keep on working. You can't get discouraged easily. It's not easy to be an actor. You have, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for weak people. <laughs> you got to get, you got to get some tough, grow some tough skin, and keep on going. Who, dead or alive, would you like to sit down and chat with? Dead or alive. Hmm. I'd like to talk with uh, a deaf guy who was around in 19, the 1900s. His name was George Veditz, V-E-D-I-T-Z. He was a deaf advocate way ahead of his time. I would like to sit down and talk with him and see where, if the sign language has changed from that time until now. I know that it has progressed, but he had some very advanced ideas about deaf people and their rights. And uh, he didn't like when uh, hearing people ask other hearing people what the deaf experience is like. He preferred to be, if you wanna know something about deaf people, ask me directly. That's a guy I like to sit down and talk with because he was way ahead of his time. And uh, I wish I could talk with that guy, George Vedits. This is my very last question. When you give your answer, can you give it in sign language, uh, American sign language? So the um, question is, if you have to wear a t-shirt with one word on it for the rest of your life, which word would you choose? Hmm. Well, if I had to live the rest of my life with one t-shirt on, I think I would like it to say L-O-V-E, love. Now. So it'd be L-O-V-E, now. That's the only thing that really matters, I think, is to, uh, to love yourself so that you can attract love more to yourself. But love yourself so that you can spread that love out into the world. I found a place. I think it's important that you stay here with us right now, Ruben. We're looking for a solution to, to this. Not this. I need you to wait for me, okay? You're it for me, Lou. You're my part. You're it for me, okay? You gotta wait for me. does keep moving it can be a damn cruel place but those moments of stillness 